so for the top raptors, I would typically just design these as I'm doing here above the entire project and just move them into place. Now, you could do this two different ways. This is a way I typically don't do it. Um, the easier way is to bring these in and then join them and remove part of the uh, component or it will remove it automatically that you don't want to be part of the other component, which is a terrible way of explaining it. But it's in previous videos of mine. Uh, instead of cutting around like I'm doing here before I extrude, you could actually not do this and bring this piece down already fully extruded and then join it together with the rest of the components and use the tool body function and it will cut out what you need and it'll show that cutout also on your drawings. But this is just one way of doing it. This is kind of the most basic way of doing it. It works, it does its job, it's simple, and you don't have to go in and join components together and select what tool body is what. This is just a real quick brainless way of doing it. And you'll see what I'm talking about here once this is extruded. Now, when I'm doing the pattern on path here, like I always do, I uh, don't do it, I do it based on distance. And you can make these however far apart you want them. They're not really supporting anything other than the top slats that you'll see me put on here in a minute. So if you wanted these to be spaced closer or further apart, uh, it all is up to a preference, cosmetically speaking at that point. But the distance I have it now is a pretty good distance that looks good as far as I'm concerned. Now, 
I've seen some people not even put these on and just do the top two by two slat that I'm about to do without these particular joists on top, which to me doesn't look right, but some people do it. So pergolas are made in many different ways. Some people make them to where you can have like a trellis top to where you have vines growing all over them and you really can't see the structure anyway. So in that case, it may not make sense to use so much lumber. But if this is just out in the open by someone's pool or something, you, I think you would really want to go the way I'm going here on this particular design, in my opinion. But it is a lot of wood. And here's the slats I was referring to. Now, something I may do in a later video is actually take the tail end of this particular build and add a collapsible uh, canvas top underneath 
which is a really cool feature to pergolas. That way you can completely either block out the sun or rain, or it depends on what material you use, obviously. But with my uh, leather sewing machine, I'm able to sew pretty thick, or pretty much all canvas, to be honest, uh, because technically my sewing machine it, made by the company Sailrite is for people that have sailboats, hence the name Sailrite. So it's really good for making or using like sail material or patio material that you would see at a restaurant or a bar um, and just put eyelets in it and you can use airplane wire and make it collapsible. So I may do that on, on another video. I think I will because it's really a cool look under a pergola to be able to block out everything and still use it in all kinds of uh, weather. Okay, so I'm adding the, not the appearance, even though it looks like the appearance, this is the actual physical material. And again, the reason I'm doing this is because when I go to print out the material list on the blueprints, I want it to say wood, you know, of some kind, in lieu of the default steel, because that may throw some people off when they look at the uh, material list. So you want it to be wood for that reason. Okay, the last thing here we're building are the supports for the perimeter of the pergola columns or posts, actually. And I use the spline tool here to get a decorative curve. I mean, you can do, if you're actually gonna make these, you can make this look however you want. There are so many different designs for the supports. Just make sure you have enough wood to hold up the, you know, to support, help support the actual pergola um, because they do serve a purpose, not just cosmetically. And I am using a two by six here, hence the five and a half inch material. But as you can see, I'm just simply 
making the curve using the spline tool, and then I will extrude this. Now, these are different sizes. Uh, there's two sizes when you make these, and I made them too big the first time. There's no method I have to make these as far as a length that I always go with, just kind of a ballpark. So I had to go back and redo one of these, which is kind of neat because you could see me go back in the history and simply just edit the sketch and hit OK, and it's changed, which is a great feature, again, in Fusion 360. But you'll see me move these around, too. I use the Move tool a lot in these to get them where I want. So stay tuned to see those little tricks of the trade if you're not too good with the uh, Move tool. It's very good to get yourself used to that tool. It helps out a lot when building any kind of furniture or anything for, uh, for the most part in woodworking.
all right thanks again for watching and there will be more to come again i'll be doing a few tool reviews as well because those seem to be pretty popular uh, some of the tools that i use and recommend just to share that with you guys but um anyway i appreciate you watching it please subscribe if you have not and tell your fellow craftsmen to do the same thanks